With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. How would you like a 15% discount to my daily email, the stack of stuff, the show notes, discounts to the conference, all of that? All you need to do is text the word SHOW to 33777. You'll get the annual subscription with a 15% discount to my daily email. You'll get the stack of stuff, the links to the show notes, discounts to the conference, and so much more. All you have to do is text the word SHOW, S-H-O-W, to 33777. Text SHOW to 33777. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 2. Greetings, conversationalists. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the United States of America. Glad to have you with me. We're moving on from the Supreme Court argument. But I got a note, uh, if you want to hear my review of it or hear the audio clips of the justices, you should get my show notes, which you can get by texting DATA to 33777. Click that top link. You can subscribe, get the show notes, because we put a number of those clips in the show notes today uh, from the justices. It's it just a brutal, brutal beatdown of Colorado and law professors across America uh, who um, just, they were convinced, convinced that, that this was this was the way to stop Trump. And nope, 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 nope. Um, not the case. So... Now, we need to move on, uh, but it's relevant to what happened at the Supreme Court today. Uh, it, it's relevant to a lot of people's thinking. I, 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 need to, I need to inform some of you of some important history because much of what goes on in the world today uh, in partisan politics from the left is used to try to demean and undermine the government of the United States. And it's not just legitimacy, but it's goodness. I'm alarmed by the growing number of people on the right who have decided, in effect, that the United States is not a good or great nation uh, for whatever their partisan bugaboo is, um, whether it's abortion or um, transgenderism, usually it's a social or cultural issue. But they're like, oh, we're, no, we're not a great nation. We we allow this abomination, as do so many other countries. But when when their side takes back power, suddenly they're okay. It, 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 the problem here is that f- for a lot of people on the right right now, whether or not you believe the United States is the best nation— or one of the greatest nations, depends on who the president is and what his party is. When Donald Trump is president, comes roaring back to life that they this is the best nation ever. When, when Trump loses, suddenly it's the worst nation ever. There's a difference, though, here for the partisans. On, on the right, it's transactional. On the left, there's a growing body of evidence that on the left, they really don't like the United States of America. Pure Research has a story out in a research poll on partisan differences in the United States and its global standing. Do you believe the United States stands above all other countries in the world? Is one of the greatest countries along with others or other countries are better than the United States? In 2011, 5% of Republicans said the United States is worse than other countries. And in 2011, 8% of Democrats said it. In 2019, it was 5% of Republicans and 27% 
of Democrats. In 2023, 17% of Republicans think other countries are better than the United States. 36% of Democrats do. More than a third of Democrats think other countries are better than the United States. In 2011, 47% of Republicans said the United States stands above all other countries on the planet. And 31% of Democrats did. In 2023, 31% of Republicans say the United States stands above all other countries in the world. Only 9% of Democrats do. In 2011, it was 8% of Democrats said the United States is worse than every other country, and 31% said it's the greatest country. And in 2023, it's 36% of Democrats say the U.S. is the worst country, and 9% say it's the best country. 51% of Republicans say the U.S. is one of the greatest countries along with other countries. 54% of Democrats say the U.S. is one of the greatest countries. The problem here is that you got 17% of, of Republicans say the U.S. is worse than all the other countries. But you got 36% of Democrats saying it. And the thing is, on the Republican side, it's transactional. You get a Republican in the White House, that number goes down. With Democrats, it doesn't matter who's in the White House. At least a third of them hate this country. And only 9% of them think it's the best country. Unlike almost every single one of you listening right now, I have been to more countries than I have been to states in this union. There are only two continents I have not visited. South America and Antarctica. I have been on every other continent. I have been from Northern Europe to Southern Europe. I have been to Africa. I grew up in the Middle East. I've been all over Asia. I can assure you there is no country as extraordinary as the United States of America. For all of its flaws, we're not a perfect country. No country is. We're still better than every other country on the planet. Our culture reigns supreme in every other country on the planet. Remember, when they killed Osama bin Laden, they found a copy of Ice Age, the animated movie, in his uh, dwelling place, an American animated movie from DreamWorks. That's how dominant American culture is. Even Osama bin Laden, who hated us, wanted to watch our movies. The Chinese have tried to shut American movies out of its box office, and so what have they done? They've started remaking American movies as their own. Y'all, we truly, genuinely are the best country on this planet. And I don't relate to or understand well the people in the United States of America who are somehow convinced that we're not because we are. And what I find notable is that most of the people who say that we're not the best country on the planet are people who have never visited other countries. They have idealized versions of other countries in their head. It's like there's this fixation among cons some conservatives, and, and well, I shouldn't say conservatives, among populists on the right with Russia or with uh, Hungary. Oh, they're so much better than us. No, no, they're not. These are trash countries. These are third world countries, but you don't call them third world countries because it's a bunch of white people, and you don't like to think of white people living in third world countries. They're third world countries. Russia is a third world country with nukes. I've been to Canada. Canada is our hat. Canada wants to be just like us, eh? I've been to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Our culture is dominant there. I've been to Germany. The only good thing about Germany is you can get a beer at McDonald's and Wiener Schnitzel. I love Wiener Schnitzel. But the Germans, well, I mean, we, we don't have German fast food restaurants in this country, but Germany has KFC, McDonald's, and Burger King. Even China 
as KFC, McDonald's, and Burger King. So does Russia. We are the greatest country. Not only is it so, but no other country has people willing to die to get there. You certainly have people flee North Africa trying to get into Europe. But then when they get to Europe, what do they want to do? They want to come here. They don't want to stay in Europe. Nobody wants to stay in Europe. It's filled with Europeans. Who would want to stay in Europe? I mean, the only time you want to be a European is when you go to the bathroom and European. But then you leave the bathroom after you flushed and you're no longer European. You're, you're back out into America. You, you, don't, you don't want to be a European. European socialists, they take trains everywhere. All the progressives of this country are like, oh, they have trains. They have tra- we don't have trains. We were, if we were a good country, we would have trains. No, you don't want a train to go from New York to California. You don't want a train. You don't want a high-speed rail. You want to get on an airplane that goes really fast so that you can get there as quickly as you can. Progressives love to believe that other places are better and none of them have been to those other places. Or they have and they came away with a deluded fantasy of how those places worked. Some on the right wish to believe that other countries are better for cultural reasons. But it also happens to be a bunch of people on the right who've never actually lived in those other places. It's absurd to not recognize the greatness of the United States of America. I have literally been all over the planet, again, except for two continents. Do you think, well, I mean, what country do you think is better than us? Do you think China is better than us? China that runs concentration camps and locks people away and punishes people for daring to criticize the state? Really, is is China better than us? Do you think Russia is better than us? Russia, a a country that is uh, releasing its convicts from prison to go let them die on the plains of of Ukraine? Really? You think it's better than us? Do you think Mexico is better than us? A, A country with a president controlled by drug lords where people are fleeing? Do you think, I don't know, Egypt? Is Egypt better than us? Certainly older than us. It's got the pyramids. It's a third world country. Where do you think is better than us? And that's the thing. The people who come up with these other countries and say, well, actually, this country is better than us. It's it's more moral than us. Look at, at Hungary. Hungary values families and, and Hungary didn't, uh, didn't allow transgenderism and, and Hungary persecutes the gays. It's clearly better than us. Oh, because they treat a class of people you don't like badly than the United States does, uh, you presume that Hungary is, is better than us. No, it means you're actually a moral weirdo. I'm telling you guys, I've been around the world. And other people want to be Americans. There's this growing strain of thought you see in the media that American culture is declining around the world. People aren't embracing American culture around the world. These people who say this have not been around the world. Because you go to India, go to Mumbai, go to Aden in Yemen, racked with war right now. Go to Mogadishu in Somalia. Go, go there. Go to Dar al Salaam in Tanzania. Or head over to Thailand. Go to Thailand. Go, go to Bangkok. Go to Cambodia. Go to Phnom Penh. Go, go, go to Vietnam. Go to Ho Chi Minh City. You know what you're likely to find in any of those places? Phnom Penh, Ho Chi Minh City, Bangkok, Dar es Salaam. Chennai, Mumbai, Dubai, Damascus. You know what you're likely to find? You're going to find someone wearing a Yankees baseball cap. They don't know anything about the Yankees. They've never heard of Babe Ruth. They don't know any of the Seinfeld jokes about the Yankees and George working because Stan's working for for the Yankees. They, they They don't know who Steinbrenner is. They wear the Yankees cap because it signifies America for them and American culture for them. 
You go to Isfahan in Iran, you'll find people wearing Yankees ball caps. Because they all want to be us. It's a level of our insularity in this country that we can have people on the left despise this country and they work socially, they work politically to run down this country because they're convinced that this country must be remade and it, it should be startling to Democrats who don't consider themselves progressives that so few Democrats are willing to acknowledge the greatness of America. Only 9% of Democrats believe the United States is the best country. 36% believe it's worse than other countries. That's a damning indictment on the Democratic Party. And if you are a Democrat and you, you're you horrified by this, well, you may need to rethink which party you're in. And if you decide to stick with it, you may need to work on cleaning up your party because your party is being overrun with a group of people who actually hate this country. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right, ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary, full work limited by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, welcome. It's Eric Erickson here. The phone number, if you want to call in, 877-973-7425. It has happened again. It has. First, it was Francois Mitterrand, who Joe Biden said he had talked to. Instead of uh, Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, he, he referenced Mitterrand, who's been dead since the early 90s. Now on Wednesday, Joe Biden says he's had a conversation with Helmut Kohl, the German chancellor. A uh, problem is that uh, Helmut Kohl died in 2017 and hadn't been chancellor of Germany for some time before that. He was meaning Angela Merkel, who was the chancellor, um, but uh, he did it again. Joe Biden keeps talking to dead people. He's either talking to dead people or he's got dementia. Um, possibly he was using a Ouija board. We're, we're not sure. Even the Daily Beast is starting to pick up on this stuff. I mean, the Daily Beast is a progressive publication. And being a progressive publication, you would think that they would not be covering this stuff, and yet the progressive publications are starting to realize they have problems with Joe Biden. I do want to re- remember when I was in D.C. in, in 2022, there are a, a group of reporters who were saying the New York Times is going to start doing just pounding on 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 Biden after the election. It never happened because it turned out better for the Democrats. I'm wondering if it's about to start happening because the polls are starting to freak them out. Good poll just came out of Wisconsin and Donald Trump's ahead of Biden there. Bad signs for the Democrats. A good sign for you is at Stamps.com. You'll see a little microphone on the top right of that site. You can click on it, put in my name, Eric, and start saving with Stamps.com. Stamps.com has been around for 25 years, helping small businesses and individuals save money when they ship. You go to Stamps.com, click the mic, put in my name, Eric. You can sign up with them today. There's no long-term commitment, no long-term contract to sign. You get a uh, digital scale to help you weigh packages. Here's the deal. You can go through Stamps.com to ship with the post office UPS and save up to 89% off shipping rates. Not only that, you can arrange pickup at your office or your home so you don't have to go stand in line. You can even get supplies from Stamps.com, envelopes, boxes, bubble wrap stamps, you name it, labels. And then with your mobile device or your computer and a printer, you can print the labels and ship via Stamps.com. And you're saving a ton of money. It's a great setup. You can cancel at any time. There's no long-term obligation. I've been using them for about 20 years on and off. I love them. I used them the other day, as a matter of fact. It's so easy to use. Interface is great. You just need a printer and a computer. Stamps.com. Click the microphone. Put in Eric. Start saving today. Lucky Land Casino. Asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. 
Greetings and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. I, I'm sorry, I gotta I gotta just take a short moment here and deal with this story. PETA is at it again. Y'all, the, the PETA folks are just some crazy people. PETA is asking amusement ride manufacturers, particularly the largest amusement park ride manufacturer, who happens to be in Kansas, to stop producing animal-themed carousels. Children learn through play and teaching them to have respect and compassion for all living, feeling beings can help create a more just and merciful world, says Ingrid Newkirk of PETA. In the release, the organization asks that Chance Rides, a Kansas-based amusement company that animal-themed merry-go-rounds celebrate exploitation. PETA implores Aaron Landrum, the president and CEO of Chance Rides, to end its production of animal-themed carousels and instead produce figures in the shapes of cars, airplanes, spaceships, bulldozers, and other vehicles. Uh, You know, okay, so first of all, can we just give it to PETA for, for, for just a minute? In all in all candor and honesty, these are true believers. These are true believers. And you got to admire uh, their dedication to their beliefs. They come across as insane to all the rest of us, but they are true believers. It's cult-like. It's honestly, it, it's like the people who gave up Bud Light until Donald Trump said it, it's safe to drink the Bud Light. Now they're like, I'm going to go get a case of Bud Light. I don't even drink beer. I'm Baptist, but I'm going to have some because he said so. And there were, there literally were examples of this yesterday on social media. People who uh, sold their Anheuser-Busch stock said they never, ever, ever drink Bud Light again. And then Trump says, hey, you can drink it. They're holding the fundraiser for me. They're like, I'm going to go buy me some Bud Light. It's it's cult-like. It, 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 PETA is, is cult-like. PETA is... Don't make carousels in the shapes of horses because children would, they'll ride the horses and think the horses are creatures. To, this, it, horses are meant to be ridden. God gave us horses as work animals. He gave us dogs to help us. There are some brilliant, wonderful uh, breeds of dogs out there that help farmers. They're, they're wonderful they help round up the sheep for the slaughter. I mean, how does what does Peter think about those dogs? Those are some problematic dogs. I it just, I just, I'm, I'm the screwed up British people. But God bless them, true believers. They're the true believers. Just, I feel bad for the companies. Feel bad for the companies. All right, I, I got to move on. I just, I've been, I saw that story, and it just, the whole thing is absurd to me. There is a story we need to talk about. Remember the candidate who was running for office in New York City? And his party was essentially the rent's too damn high party. That that was the name of his political party he had conjured up. This is from the Associated Press. A record number of Americans can't afford their rent. Lawmakers are scrambling to help. Single mom Caitlin Colbert watched as rent for her two-bedroom apartment doubled, then tripled, then quadrupled over a decade in Denver. From $750 a month to $3,374 last year. Every month, like millions of Americans, Colbert juggles her costs. She pays rent or swim team fees for one of her three kids, rent or school supplies, rent or groceries. Colbert, a social worker who helps people stay financially afloat, would often arrive home to notices given her 30 days to pay rent and a late fee or face eviction. Every month, you just got a budget and then you still fall short. This month, we have $13 left. Millions of Americans, especially people of color, are facing these same painful decisions that a record number struggle with unaffordable rent increases, a crisis fueled by rising prices for inflation, a shortage of affordable housing, and the end of pandemic relief. You know what? If these cities lowered property taxes, it could help, but they're not going to do that. Sometimes they want to make the landlord the bad guy. Let, let, me, let me tell you what landlords are dealing with around the country. It's, it's a big issue now where I am in Atlanta. People who refuse to leave, they're squatting. They don't want to pay their rent, and they squat. 
this is a, this is a ridiculousness that's driving up the cost of rent for everybody. Right now, the uh, legislature in uh, in Georgia is meeting, and, and there are a couple other legislatures in the nation that are dealing with this as well, trying to figure out what to do about squatters' rights and in, in, in squatters and houses, people who they don't they stop paying their money. The landlord wants to evict them, and it takes forever to get them out of the house. And you know what landlords do? Landlords drive up the rental price of the property to keep the riffraff out. That affects everybody because other landlords begin to drive up their rents as well. If that guy can get this much, well, I can get something comparable. You solve the squatting problem. You're going to help deal with this issue. Now, so what's actually happening? This is a, a bizarre situation that's getting uh, more and more um, attention. In fact, Bloomberg News has this piece out of Atlanta. An estimated 1,200 homes are illegal, legally op- occupied, I'm sorry, in, in the Atlanta metro area. In the biggest U.S. market for institutional landlords, squatting in vacant rental homes has reached such extreme that owners offer intruders money to leave and many property managers won't check on suspect houses alone. A squatter last spring shot one of Matter Bansky's employees in the leg during a four-mile car chase through the Atlanta suburb of Lithonia. Urbanski, who runs a home cleaning and construction firm, had been trying to remove the man's belongings from a house owned by rental industry giant Starwood Capital Group. They got into a scuffle, which escalated into a pursuit and gunfire. I'd be terrified in Atlanta to lease out one of my properties, Urbanski said. Around 1,200 homes in metro Atlanta recently have had squatters or people occupying a property illegally without a landlord-tenant relationship. That's far more than in any other U.S. metro area tracked by the National Rental Home Council. And it's hitting big names in America's single-family rental business, including Starwood, Cerberus Capital Management's First Key Homes, Amherst Group, all of which have had dozens of properties with squatters. Landlords say evicting intruders can take half a year or more due to backlog court systems and overwhelmed sheriff's offices. The large corporations are having a hard time dealing with it. A small individual who would want to use that property to build their long-term wealth and secure their future, it could potentially destroy them. First Key Homes is based just outside Atlanta. It's installed smart home equipment and created notification systems to address trespassing. Unlawful occupants often brandish weapons and threaten neighbors, including children. The problem is rapidly growing. We're concerned about the impact. Atlanta has proven fertile ground for the single-family rental industry that sprang up following the foreclosure crisis. Low home prices helped landlords amass large portfolios, and the growing economy promised rising rents. Today, institutional investors own 72,000 homes in the Atlanta area. Institutions own 34,000 homes in Phoenix, the second-largest market. Smart job growth and pandemic real estate boom, fueled in part by people moving from pricier cities, has sent the area's housing costs soaring. The typical rent across all properties in the Atlanta area has risen 34% to $1,897. Technology is making it easier for squatters to spot and occupy vacant homes. The advent of self-showing allows would-be tenants to request a viewing and receive a code to enter the property which can go awry when the information falls in the wrong hands and fake lease documents are readily available on the Internet. People have figured out how to leverage the technology in such a way they can get into the house, counterfeit a bogus lease document, and then just won't leave. Turning on utilities in a vacant house can make it as easy as getting a modem from a local Internet service provider. Says Urbanski, he cleans as many as 40 squatter homes a month. Many internet providers require little proof of residency. Once squatters get a bill for the online account, they use that to set up water and power. In some cases, people even squat unwittingly. Scam artists can gain control of a vacant rental home, list it for rent online, and draw up fake lease documents. The duped renter coughs up thousands of dollars in advance, makes monthly payments to the scammer. This This is crazy. They... Profile a woman who got a squatter out of a home. It took two months. It took two months. She had to file an intruder affidavit in her county, DeKalb County. And now she doesn't know how to list her property for rent. She's terrified to post renting online. 
And by the way, uh, getting rid of home squatters in two months is rare. If a landlord files an eviction lawsuit, getting a court hearing can take three months and then another three months to get a sheriff's deputy or a county marshal to clear the home out. It can take up to six months to do. Intruder affidavits can be faster, but they come with troubles. Georgia law allows a property owner to submit an affidavit to the local sheriff asserting somebody is intruding on the property and instruct the sheriff to remove them. The intruder can avoid immediate removal if he provides a counter affidavit showing a legal right to be there. Through the first 10 months of 2023, 275 intruder affidavits were filed in one single county in the Atlanta area, DeKalb County. Of the properties involved, Starwood owned 78. Austin, Texas-based Amherst owned 70. Atlanta, Georgia-based First Key owned 42. Then there's a horrible situation of individuals. Tim Arco, 34 years old. He needed a lawsuit in seven months to clear squatters from a rental home he managed and partially owned near the East Lake Golf Club in Atlanta. He discovered trespassers, one of whom flashed a handgun at him. He returned to the property with his own rifle for protection, only to be detained and questioned by police about why he was armed. He lost 1800 a month in rent. Broken appliances, holes in the wall. He had to repair it. He, he's leaving the property management business. This is affecting renters. This is affecting the cost of rent. This is affecting the entire market. You want to solve the housing crisis, and you got to solve this problem because it's it's one of the problems. It's it's driving up rental costs, keeping the riffraff out, making it more selective in how you rent. This this has a direct real world impact on how rent is handled and the availability of housing in urban markets around the country, from Atlanta to Phoenix to New York City to Los Angeles, California, and every point in between. Local property taxes is another issue. Local governments keep jacking up property taxes, and they think, well, the, the, the renters don't pay it. The property owners do. I had this when I was on a city council. People on my city council really thought if we raise property taxes, it's the landlords who will pay it, not the tenants. I was like, you idiots. How do you think they assess rent? How do you come up with rent? They could not comprehend. They didn't want to comprehend it is what it was. They wanted to play ignorant. A lot of people in this country don't have the money to own a house right now, particularly because of interest rates. They're having to rent. And landlords are raising prices because of property taxes and other fees and because of the cost of squatting and the legal issues involved. If government can't get the basics right and help the law-abiding, property-owning citizens, trust in government breaks down. you got to be able to solve these problems and solve them quickly for the landlords or you have a cascading series of problems such as a lot more homelessness than you should have and homelessness among a class of people who shouldn't be homeless but they can't find a place to live other than their car. It has a cascading problem around the country. We're going to have to deal with these issues. And Atlanta, the legislature, y'all are meeting here in Georgia right now. This is a huge issue. Uh, forget renter rights. You need to deal with landlord rights and make it real easy to evict people. There's been this big push to expand renters' rights against landlords in Georgia. No, no, no. You need to help the landlords. You need to help the landlords. Real world issues. Property ownership matters and should be respected. It's actually one of the hallmarks of our Constitution. It's reflected in Hillsdale College's Constitution Minutes, that they educate Americans on the Constitution, how to deploy the Constitution, what it means for Americans. They're stewards of good constitutional governance in this country, and they want to educate you about it. Right now, if you go to ericforhillsdale.com, you can get a free pocket Constitution with the Declaration of Independence. You can even listen to the Constitution Minutes that air during advertising breaks on this program. You can share them with your friends. You can appreciate and value the Constitution of the United States of America. Our citizenry needs to be educated about the Constitution to perpetually renew our commitment to it. Hillsdale College understands that. They want you to understand it as well. If you go to ericforhillsdale.com today, E-R-I-C-K, ericforhillsdale.com, you get your free pocket Constitution, you hear the Constitution minutes, you can share them with friends, you can educate yourself and your friends about the Constitution, get a copy for yourself. You should read the American Constitution as a nation for the people, of the people, by the people, it was a nation of laws for men. The founders made it easy to read and understand our Constitution. You should take the time to read it. Just as you read Scripture as someone of faith, you should read the Constitution as someone who's an American. Eric for Hillsdale.com. Go get your copy today. 
Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Well, at MSNBC, they're trying to prepare progressives. This is Neil Cattell speaking, who is a worked for the Obama administration, argued cases before the Supreme Court. I've watched over 400 Supreme Court arguments. I've done 50 myself. I would tell you this argument did not go well for the Trump challengers, and that's to put it mildly. I probably have some other adjectives that I won't um, say on air. Oof, oof. Yeah, it did not go well. It, it, it really genuinely did not go well. Um, just, Just crazy that... I mean, progressives really thought we got him now. We got him now, and and it's it could legit be a per curiam decision, which means it's unsigned by the court, a unanimous decision unsigned by the court um, that just says Colorado got it wrong. It really could happen, um, or it's eight. It, the the only question is Sotomayor. It, it it seems very obvious that Katanji Brown Jackson and Elena Kagan side with the with everybody else on the court. Uh, Sotomayor was the only one who really asked skeptical like like they all asked skeptical questions of Trump's lawyer, but like she was really affirming of the Colorado justices, which were were notable. Um, it just <laughs> it was a it was a bad day for progressives. All right, um, we gotta we gotta move on to other things, including immigration. Need to talk to you about it, uh, Joe Biden. He, the White House, signaled that if Congress didn't pass uh, the immigration proposal that is in the Senate, that they would essentially open the floodgates at the border beyond their already flooded gates. Except now, Joe Biden, who a month ago said that he had no more power to do anything, is saying, "Actually, you know, I could use an executive order to um, shut down the border." It's kind of funny. To watch the panic set in among Democrats, they really did think that they could blame Republicans for this after months and months and months of doing what they did. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm sorry, y'all, but the fact that the Biden administration is now in full panic over immigration after months of telling us it's no big deal uh, is actually kind of hilarious to watch. Uh, watch the scramble. Watch the scramble happen. We will get into that, what they're doing the state of play, and also why this was never going to happen. I, I think it's worth reiterating why this was never going to happen. Uh, the subject of my syndicated column uh, this weekend in newspapers around the country as well. I'll get into it. But Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.